Hi, it's Matt from Go Green Autos. So in this video, I'm going to give you some tips how to replace your number plates. And we're going to fit these new green number plates to this Peugeot Partner electric van. So firstly, fittings. Do we use screws or sticky pads? Uh, most motor dealers will just use screws because it's quick and easy um, and they don't even uh, measure it up. They just whack them in, put the plates on really quick. Um, personally, I prefer sticky pads um, because you're not putting holes in your vehicles. And also, when you drill a number plate, you're, uh, there's a good chance as it ages that water will get into the plate and you'll end up with a black, mucky mess down the plate where water and dirt and mould gets in the plate. And obviously, if you don't drill it, they will last that little bit longer. However, there are times where you do need to fix it with screws. Um, particularly when it's on the front of cars and it's on a bumper. So in this case, we've got a plastic bumper and it's got a, quite a curve. So when there's quite a curve, there's a lot of force on that plate. So it's better to put a screw either end. Sticky pads will hold it, um, but screws just are easier in a case like this where you're curving the plate a lot. Then uh, I would often put one or two sticky pads on and a pair of screws and let it, you're then letting the screws take the force of um, curving that plate round. Also a plastic bumper is likely to get hit and it might flex and um, having screws on there is just going to hold that number plate on a little bit better if it all starts getting twisted or flexed in a little parking bump. On this van we're going to screw the front number plate on but we're going to stick the back one on. So first off uh, in this case we're going to replace this Euro number plate with a green plate and I can already see that the original Peugeot dealer hadn't put the screws in the middle of the plate. That screw is higher than that screw. So in this case I'm going to ignore the existing holes. However, if you're taking off a... Um, a lot, most of you watching this video are going to be removing a Go Green number plate and replacing it with the new green Go Green number plate then the screw holes will be lined up. So in that case, probably best to take off the original plate, lay it over your new plate and drill your holes in exactly the same place and reuse your screw holes. It saves putting extra screw holes in your bodywork or in your bumper. Um, but I would also put a sticky pad either end as well because those screw holes, um, uh, the screws aren't going to grip quite so well in an existing screw hole as they would with a new forcing a new hole into the plastic so having that additional um, sticky pad either end will help but as I said in this case we're going to whip this number plate off and start from afresh so in this case I don't need to keep these original plastic caps so I'm not worried about um, ruining them by taking them off with a posi screwdriver if you wanted to reuse the cap then use a thin flat blade screwdriver to take them off but I'm throwing those away so it doesn't matter and then we take them both out so next thing you're going to want to do is clean this area particularly if you're going to uh, put some sticky pads on there so just use a little bit of water or a little bit of soapy water that I've got there and give that a clean even if you're screwing the plate, you might as well clean underneath the plate and get rid of all the muck while you're there. So while that's drying, we can now make our holes in the plate. So as I said, if you're taking off an existing plate and want to use the screw holes, then best thing to do is put that existing plate over the other one and mark your holes. But in this case, we're going to start from afresh. So what you want to do is mark on the back where we want it. So I'm just going to measure. We're going to go in 22 mil and half a plate is 55 mil. And you can write on the back of these, we'll mark on the back of these with the normal biro. And you want to get them the same on both sides. So it all looks nice and neat and there we have got our two holes so when you're drilling you must always drill from the 
back of the plate towards the front. Never do it from this side because you're going to separate the two parts of the plate and again that's going to allow water in. Um, so always mark on the back and drill from the back and you want to use a four and a half or five mil drill ideally. Not that that's that crucial but something about that size. There's one. Help if that was done up. And put your plastic waste in the bin. Don't let that go down the uh, water table. So at this point we could just screw that straight on but I always just add a bit of sticky pad on the back as well for a bit of extra security and in this case I'm just going to cut a pad in half and just put it next to each screw hole. However if you're taking off an existing plate and there was already pads there then you could just move it along saves you trying to take the old pad off or stick a whole sticky pad in the middle is another good place because that's its sort of pivot point where it bends. So the next thing is these sticky pads will not stick if it's very cold or this is damp and even though I've wiped that there will still be a slight damp haze on the plastic and that's where you really need a heat gun or a hairdryer. And when you're using sticky pads, particularly if it's cold, always use a hairdryer. And that will just remove any dampness off that plastic at the point where those pads are gonna stick. And also warm up the pads because you've often and only, have only got one chance to make this work and you want it to work properly. Particularly if you're only sticking with pads, they've got to work. So it makes all the difference warming it all up. Even on a summer's day, still get the hairdryer out because even though you can't see it, there will be a little haze of dampness on the plastic. Line it up. And those sticky pads, because I've worn them, are now going to hold it. And then I will remove the protective covering. So we can now put our screws in. And this side we've got a white cap. You don't need to drill holes in the plastic. Just push and they will make their own hole. And don't do it, do it up too tight, just let it grip and that will do. If you end up doing it too tight and it goes past that point of gripping, you then lost that um, opportunity for that screw to work and it's just going to spin and not hold it. So you don't have to be too forceful, just let it get to the point where it's going to grip. and then leave it at that. There, that one's done. So let's do the back one. So on the back of this van, we have got a stuck on number plate and we're gonna re replace that with another stuck on number plate. So this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. So firstly, we've got to remove the number plate. And with this, you just got to pull it off. Best to sort of like I'm doing, using your fingers as a lever, you can get quite a lot of strength then. And there, got the old plate off. So the worst job is getting rid of these original sticky pads. And it takes a very long time. But there's no point scrimping and trying to just stick a pad, uh, a new plate over the top with new pads because your pads have got to get a good uh, anchoring onto the bodywork and uh, you want this to be nice and clean and dirt free otherwise your new plate isn't going to stick and it could fall off so this does take a long time firstly let's get rid of the dirt so you could just wash it with a sponge and a bucket of water 
I'm just going to use this rag for now. Right, so getting rid of these. This is a pain. So you could certainly warm them with your hair dryer. That does help to soften the glue. And this is where you use a little plastic scraper. So we could try that. Certainly getting rid of the worst of it helps because next we'll use a solvent or something else to soften the glue. But as much that you can get off, the better because this foam, let me use the one with, with a handle. This foam does absorb lots of solvent so if you can get the most off that you can all better. And next I'm using a solvent, it's a sort of panel wipe um, and you really just now got to let that dissolve the glue. Obviously you're unlikely to have anything and that uh, sticky stuff remover is great but I've also read just using WD-40 will do it. I haven't tried that myself because I've always had other products. Uh, I've also read vinegar might work or does work. So you could try that as well. But, or indeed just use your hair dryer. But we're gonna, you're going to want to get all of these off and there is absolutely no point scrimping here. The, the cleaner this surface is, the better your new plate is going to um, stick. So persevere and get all of these pads off. That's the downside of using sticky pads, is they are a right pain when you want to remove a plate. But of course normally this would be a once only job. But so. Keep persevering with this. I'm not leaving it long enough to dwell really, but this product I've got, I can spray that on, leave it for five minutes and it will pretty much make that dissolve. When getting these off, do only use plastic. A plastic scraper, you could even use an old credit card or an old store card that uh, works as a good scraper but do not use anything metal. I know a metal blade would wick through that lovely, but uh, it will scratch the paintwork and it's just not worth it. Um, just keep to metal tools only. This job, depending on how many sticky pads there are, you know, it could take you up to half an hour. And my advice here is really do take your time. Don't think, oh yeah, that will do. Leave a bit of it on there because so what? It's gonna be covered, it's gonna be hidden. That's fine, if it's gonna be hidden and you're not putting your new pads on top of the old pads, great. But make sure your new pads are only sticking to clean paintwork because you want them to work. As I said, you've got one chance to get it right. So just spend your time and make sure it is right. So there we go, that is now clean and I'm just going to go over with water again because actually that solvent does dissolve with water and I can just make sure that's off the paintwork. There, that's nice and clean, ready to stick the new plate on. So next we need to put some sticky pads on the back of this plate. So one on each end. So a number plate will hold quite well with just three. However, because this is a van and this door is getting slammed all the time, I'm going to put four pads and that will hold that really well. So next we want to line that up. So 
again we've only got one chance once that's on that is on so you want to make sure it's right so you could use a little spirit level and hold that under there to get that level what I tend to do is sort of do it by eye using the lines on the bodywork sort of find that position there because that's um, straight and then drop it down but what I do do is get it central so the best thing to do for that is stick a bit of tape on the bodywork I stick a little bit on the number plate I then mark the middle of the number plate it's 52 centimeters long so it's 26 so that's the middle of the plate I then find the middle point of the vehicle this is a little bit tricky on these but that's 18 so that's roughly you don't have to be particularly accurate but yeah that's, that's actually a, oh, what you don't want to do is right on the <laughs> right on your car right there we go so that is then essential when I've got that there so next thing which is the most important thing again get your hair dryer out or in my case the hot air gum and make sure that there is absolutely no moisture on that panel uh, but also if it's cold you know if you're doing this outside and like now it's winter obviously the glue on the pants isn't going to stick if it's cold so get the panel warm and get these pads warm and the warmer it all is the better it's going to hold obviously be careful if you're using a hot egg and that you don't get your paintwork too hot and you blister it but that's getting all the moisture off the bodywork and then again i'm going to peel the backing off the pads and I'm going to warm the pads up and do not do this without a hairdryer it will make all the difference you don't want to stick your number plate on and then find a day later that it's fallen off on the drive or worse fallen off while you're driving along and you've lost your plate completely so this is the most important part and always do get a hairdryer out even if it's a sunny day and that looks dry you'll be surprised if you just washed it that there is a slight haze on the panel but give all that a good warming up and then we're ready to stick it on right and then we can put that on but I'm going to have to move the camera and stand back so I can get that nice and square So I've put that on, give it a good push where those pads are, making sure that's all stuck really well. Remove my bit of masking tape. And then we can remove that protective film. Just use your fingernail and tear the corner. And you can do that. And there we go. Your new number plate is now stuck on.